Hey guys, this is Mrs. Herring Watson, and I'm sorry I couldn't be with you this week since I am out of town, but I hope that you will enjoy exploring these resources that I've curated for you regarding screencasting and tutorial creation. Uh, last week we talked about very briefly some of the important reasons that we would want to screencast for the classroom. Uh, the main one being that this is a really great way to provide a library of resources for our students so that for those kids who maybe process a little more slowly or even are absent from class, uh, we're giving them the opportunity to see the material more than just the one time that I present it in the classroom. Um, and so having that library of resources can be a really powerful tool for some of our students, really for all of our students to come back and review material. So I just wanted to give you a little overview of what I'd like for you to do for me this week. Uh, again, obviously, if you have any questions as you're working, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email. Um, even though I'm out of town, I still have access to email on my phone and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So the first thing that I want you to do after watching this video is look through these first four resources attached to this assignment. Okay, so the first one is an ISTE article. Uh, that is going to talk to you about some of the reasons that it's important to include screencasting in the classroom. Um, I really like the article because it's short and to the point, but provides some really powerful rationale and also kind of defines uh, screencasting for you. So take the time to read the article first. It will also give you some scenarios in which screencasting could be useful. Several of these resources are going to talk about tools for screencasting, but fortunately on iPad, you don't have to worry about using these tools. You can just use the screen record feature built into the control center on your iPad. Uh, the second article is from EdTech Teacher, which is another great resource. What I like about this resource is that it's going to give you some screencasting tools for a variety of devices. So the first one is iPad. But if I click on the next blue icon, it's going to give you some screen recording apps for Chromebooks. If I click on the third one, it's going to give me some devices for laptops. And then the last one is for Android tablets. So I think it's really important for you to have access to a variety of options that match the variety of hardware that you may have in your future classroom. So when you click on each blue icon below, you'll get a list of apps that are available as well as a price, the device that it's used for, and their rated usefulness and ease of use. So take some time to explore those different options and see what some of those different apps do. Uh, the third link is to Kathy Schrock's Guide to Everything. I love Kathy Schrock's website because she gives you, she has curated so many resources for teachers uh, as they're trying to work to integrate technology meaningfully in the classroom. So you'll notice that this page is all hyperlinks. She's given general screencasting information, some rubrics for if we have students screencasting, uh, some examples of and articles about screencasting by teachers. And then she's also given several apps, again, across a variety of devices that can be used for screencasting and screen recording. And then if you keep scrolling down, you can find access to other things on her site. Again, she has a ton of resources on integrating technology in the classroom. This could get very overwhelming. You could spend hours and hours going through all of these links, but I really want you to find a few that seem useful to you and dig into them and see what information you can gain about why screencasting can be useful and how you can accomplish that task to help out your students in the classroom. And then the last tool is just a visual on, created in PictoChart of six ideas for screencasting in the classroom. This is to help you start brainstorming how you might use screencasting in your own class, but also why you might use it. So I think that why question is so important. We will not integrate things that we don't see the purpose for. So it's defined and then they've given you six ideas. Uh, so I want you to take these pretty general ideas and I want you to come up with a specific case use that you might see for your own classroom. Uh, not This is not just about what teachers can create, but also we can ask students to create some of these screencasts as well. So think big, brainstorm big, uh, because the next step that you'll take is to have a little discussion 
about screencasting in the classroom. So once you've looked at these four resources, really explored them, maybe taken some notes on the things that you've learned, then you're gonna click on this Flipgrid link. And it's gonna be a locked grid, so you will click log in with Google, and then you need to choose your UCA email address. The grid is not gonna let you in unless you use your Cub account. So click on your UCA email address, and it's gonna open a little video discussion board. Uh, and I want you to respond to these two questions. First, why are screencasts a valuable tool for teachers and students? And then secondly, we I gave you some pretty broad ideas, but I want you to be specific now. How do you think you could use screencasts in your future classroom to help your students? So be specific to Asian content that you'd like to teach. And then after you've posted your video, you're gonna, I want you to respond to the videos of at least two classmates. And this particular video discussion board is shared across all of my uh, integrating technology and teaching classes. So hopefully you'll get to hear some new voices, not just in the section that you attend, but also from students in the other section of the class. To record your video here, all you do is click the big green plus button. And I'll just show you right now. You need to make sure your camera is turned on, so there I am. And when you're ready to record, you'll click the record button. After you record, you'll just click a little next arrow. It'll show up in the bottom right corner over here, and it will guide you through the steps to post your video. Uh, to respond to someone else's video, you'll have to click and watch it, and then there will be a little respond record button in the middle of their video, kind of down at the bottom as well. And so if you click on that button, it will allow you to record a video response to what they had to say about screencasting. Everyone's videos will show up in a little grid all along here as they post. So I look forward to listening to and seeing your discussion uh, and the ways that you communicate with each other about the purpose and uh, importance of screencasts. So you've read all four articles, you've posted your Flipgrid video, and you've responded to some others. Then I want you to make your own screen recording on your iPad. So just a reminder, you'll go to settings or the, on your iPad, control center, customize controls, and you'll need to add the screen record button. Okay, once you've done that, you'll have this little bullseye in your control center. Before you just click to record, you'll need to tap and hold, use that long press that we talked about in the iOS 11 overview video, because you need to turn the microphone audio on. Uh, otherwise, you'll have a silent screen recording and I won't be able to hear what you're talking about. So make sure you turn that on and then you'll tap, it'll count down three, two, one, and a red bar will appear across your iPad at the top so that you know your video is recording. When you're finished, you'll just tap the red bar to stop the recording, and your video will automatically save to photos. Once it's in photos, you'll be able to just add it as an attachment to this assignment so that I'll be able to see the screencast recording that you created. So you can you have a couple choices for your screencast. You can choose to either record a content area uh, tutorial. So for example, you might model how to solve a math problem using uh, a whiteboard app or the notes app on your iPad, or you can create a screencast about how to complete some type of technological task on your iPad. Uh, so think about the, the tutorial I'm creating right now talking you through the assignment um, or the Apple teacher tutorial that I built for you. So those would be focused more on some kind of technological task or giving instructions. So you can take that route or you can explain some type of content area information, whether that, whether that be how to solve a math problem or how to identify a simile or a metaphor in a piece of writing. So be creative, choose something that is within your content area and age range that you choose to teach. Uh, because this screencast that you're creating for me can also serve as another great artifact for your portfolio. So again, I look forward to seeing your work. If you have any questions as you're working, please don't hesitate to email me so that I can help you. And I look forward to seeing all of you next week. Thanks.